so this cooler is on its, it's just stupidly big. This is an RTX 3060. It does not need to be this much bigger than my head. This is the ROG Strix cooler on an RTX 3060. And, and it's just silly, like, like look, for comparison, this is my uh, tough cooler on my 6800 XT. And these things are basically the same size. Like the tough cooler is, is maybe just the, the tiniest bit bigger. But like, these are just completely different classes of graphics cards. This, this cooler is just stupid, guys. I mean, not like stupid bad, but like stupidly overbuilt for this card. It doesn't need anywhere near this amount of cooling. So even though I'm not really that into overclocking, this isn't really an overclocking focused channel, so don't expect, you know, the deepest of all, you know, sage overclocking wisdom, I think Let's overclock this thing and see if it even breaks 50 degrees, <laughs> okay? So let's just bring the camera out here and actually film the screen directly because I'm gonna actually go through the overclocking process live rather than just give you my results. Let's actually do the overclock together with MSI Afterburner and all that and just kind of see how it goes. So let's hop out and do that. Do you want to see some pretty sparkles? Do you see, do you see the little sparkles? Are those picking up on camera? So when you see the sparkles, you went too far, guys. Anyway, so what are we doing here? This is what you might do when overclocking a GPU. You might pull up MSI Afterburner, unless you're on a Radeon card where it's just built into the driver software. That's one of the things that I like. And the sparkles we're seeing are visual artifacts of me pushing my memory clock too high. So first of all, uh, you can just see where your GPU defaults to. Now I believe that this Strix model already has a small factory overclock, so everything I'm doing in here is kind of pushing past that. Now it looks like my core voltage is locked here, and I'm gonna be honest guys, I don't know, I, I think I could go into a curve editor and play with the voltages here if I really, really wanted to, and kind of slide it up or down based on the voltage and the curve. But what I'd really like to see is how far we can go without worrying about the voltages. And first, let's just say, give it more power. Now, notice that I'm running something here. This happens to be cyberpunk, but really just anything that's gonna be demanding on your GPU. And once you've dialed in the overclock, you're gonna to wanna to actually run some sort of benchmark, not just leave something here. You wanna stress test it, make sure it's working. But in general, I like to have something where I can, first of all, see if my performance is changing, if so, how much. And then also, you know, is it stable? If it instantly crashes, that's bad. And again, lots of sparkles. Let's, let's do lots of sparkles. Sparkles are bad. We don't want sparkles. So <laughs> what are we gonna do here? Well, I think the first thing when overclocking is I want to let it use more power if it wants to. Now, different GPU models are gonna have different limits. This one's set to 123% as the limit here. And this is allowing the temp slider to go up as well. Now, one thing about this ridiculously overbuilt cooler is even if I do this, by the way, let's check when I click apply, I'm curious if my clock speeds, which you can either look at up in the, uh, the game window or an afterburner, I'm curious if it's gonna go up, like was it power limited? Okay, I actually do think, look, we're, we're holding a more even 1980. So I think there was actually a bit of a power limit um, limiting how far it was boosting in the game, which, it, which is very interesting. That's not always the case at the default settings. So giving it more power already helped stabilize the boost clocks a little bit higher. But notice that even though I allowed the temperature go to 90 degrees, that it's still under 60. We're in the mid 50s. And that's the thing about putting this ridiculous Strix cooler on this RTX 3060. But honestly, if that means it's priced as much as a 3060 Ti, buy the 3060 Ti, guys. Anyway, <laughs> that's not the point here. We're gonna, we're gonna see what we can do. Now I'm gonna leave the fan speeds where they are because it's already running really cool. And I can still barely hear the PC, so I'm not too worried about that. Okay. So let's, let's play around with the actual clock frequency. So we've got the memory clock and we've got the core clock. Now, generally you don't wanna just slide it all the way and see what happens, um, but you can kind of take your first jump pretty far. I'm gonna go 500 on the memory, enter, and then I remember I need to cl click apply. And now what I'm, what I'm gonna look for here is 
is my performance going to go up? And also, do I get any visual artifacts? Because if my performance doesn't do anything, it looks like it at least maybe didn't get worse. Now, since I'm not running a static image, there's different people walking by and all that. Performance didn't get worse. Now, now, if you push your memory too far and it's not artifacting and it's not crashing, you can sometimes get worse performance. I'm going to go up to 800 and we're going we're gonna to see what happens here. Uh, enabling it, and again, performance is at least not getting worse, staying maybe about the same. Um, but like I said, if you go too far, I think it tries to do some kind of error detection on the memory. And so um, I think we may have gained one FPS there uh, by kicking this to a thousand. So the point is, uh, you know, you want to make sure your performance is actually increasing. Don't just push it as far as you can stably. Let's try 1200. Kick it on here. Let's let's check. Okay, we're at least staying the same, maybe gaining one FPS. Let's go up to 1300. Okay, I don't... Wait, I, I saw some sparkles, guy. I saw a sparkle. There was a sparkle right there. Ah, I saw a sparkle. I saw a sparkle. 1300 seems to be too far. I'm going to go back to 1200. You gotta watch for the sparkles, guys. It's, it's the sparkles. <laughs> okay. Now, to be clear, this is still not an actual stress test. Uh, so we'll want a stress test at the end here. But I think we've got the memory about as far as we can here. So what I like to do, now I have no idea if this is overclocking like, like 101, the, this is what you do, but this is what I do. I'm just going to remember that 1200, and I'm actually going to take it away. And now I'm going to start playing with my core clocks separately. And once I max both as far as I can, then I'll look and see if they both work together or not. So I'm going to go ahead and try out plus, I'll just type it in, let's try plus 100. Now remember, this, this model is already overclocked on the factory settings. Okay, so I think that, that bumped us up quite a bit right there already, just going with 100. You can see the uh, boost clocks are going up higher now. You can also see that in the afterburner screen. And 100, yeah, that absolutely seems to be stable. Temperatures still seem good. So I'm going to try 120. You just want to go in small increments so you can identify where the crash occurs if you do get a crash. Now on the core clocks, I don't usually see performance get worse or see artifacting. At least I haven't really noticed much of that. I usually just like it's it's stable and then it's not. <laughs> okay, so we're going up to 130. Uh, so far seems good. Let's try up to 100 plus 140. You know what? This this seems too conservative. We're going to go like plus 180. Plus 180. We're trying the big jumps here. All right, we're up to 2100 over 2100. So far so good. The the temperatures are still quite low. So let's try going up to 200. All right. Dialing it in. 200 seems fine. We can still uh, see the boost going just fine right there. But wait, guys, I forgot my power limit. Let's kick that power limit all the way up, guys. I forgot the power limit. All right, we've got that power limit slid up. Now it's more stable. See how that was kind of like fluctuating up and down before? But I, I forgot that when I reset my memory, I also reset my power limit. Uh, so now we're absolutely rock solid at 2175. Let's go, uh, ooh, wait a minute. No, we're not rock solid. Guys, it crashed. I, I can't, the mouse, the mouse is moving. It, it, it crashed, it died, it died. Okay, we're gonna have to uh, restart that and come back in. All right, we fired the game back up. And remember, so what, what happened was we crashed when we were at plus 200 megahertz on the core clock and the power limit increased and we didn't have the memory overclock on at all at the time. So what I want to look at now is at 180 megahertz. So our, our, our clock, like plus 180, so our clock is around 2160 in the actual uh, game. It's been sitting here for a few minutes now, and that actually seems good. So now what I'm curious is if we go back 
to like plus 1200 on the memory clock and add that on on top. Let's watch performance, but let's also see if it crashes. See, that got us two more FPS or so, right? This isn't like a full GPU, you know, benchmark. We're not running the full benchmark, but that's what I think I want to do next. This seems good to me. Uh, we, we've boosted quite a bit higher. Our temperatures are still only 56 degrees, and I still don't really hear the fan speeds. Although, guys, my 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 PC is pretty far. Like, ah, can can I even show it? It's 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 way it's way over there. Look at those pretty lights on that Strix. Anyway, <laughs> the point is, I'm gonna run some benchmarks so we can see this side by side, and I'll report back with results, as well as, you know, if it was actually stable and if I had to change anything. All right, so I figure we'll start with the Cyberpunk benchmark, just because, well, we were in Cyberpunk anyway, although I wanna do a longer benchmark afterwards to get a more of an extended test, see what happens on the temperatures. Overall, it's looking stable so far, and performance does definitely seem to be better with the overclock. I mean, we're not talking anything mind-blowing here, but this is also not at all insignificant. Uh, looks like we're holding, what, 2152? Temperatures are still in the mid-50 degree range. That is absolutely nuts. Um, yeah, overall, in this one, it is looking very stable. And yeah, I'm, I'm quite happy with the results. Temperature is still sitting under 60, although this is a very short benchmark run. So I will definitely want to take a look at this. I think we'll look at Red Dead Redemption 2 next, because that runs a much longer benchmark test, uh, which I think will be kind of interesting here. But yeah, let's see what the overall um, average difference was, but it's actually looking pretty significant here. Yeah, 65.9 up to 71.82. The lows improved as well. All right, Red Dead Redemption 2. Whoa, whoa, wait a second here, guys. The OC is performing worse on this one. That's kind of interesting. I don't, I'm curious if that's gonna happen throughout the benchmark. We see it's clocking high, but it actually seems to be slightly worse performance. But okay, in this section, the overclock is performing much better as expected and as we saw in Cyberpunk. So I'm, I'm gonna keep a really close eye on this and see if that happens at any other point. Um, hey, any overclocking experts out there gonna tell me why we would see one particular section of the benchmark perform worse on the overclock? And now we're running, again, in this section of the benchmark, our overclock is performing much better again. So it is looking like it's going to be better overall, unless something weird happens again. Um, so that was strange. <laughs> like I said, I'm not an, enough of an overclocking expert to have a really clear idea why that might have happened. Um, unless there was something going on with the, like I said, if, if you push a memory overclock too far, I have sometimes seen performance dip, but that doesn't seem to be the case here because everywhere else it's seeming fine. So I don't know. Yeah, this section of the benchmark, we're looking stronger with the overclock as well. And temperatures are still seeming to be well under control, but so far this has all been kind of the short segments. This segment of the benchmark uh, goes on a lot longer. So I wanted to see if over an extended period of time, if it both remains stable and if our temperatures stay low here. Again, the I probably should have put the fan speeds on here, shouldn't I? I realize for an overclocking video we might care about that, but hey guys, like I said, I do this channel in my free time. We've only got so much time to film these things, so you get what you get. I can tell you I don't hear much of a noticeable difference uh, on the fan, but I couldn't tell you if maybe it's ramping slightly higher. Overall, this cooler seems to be having absolutely no issues, and it's not noticeable fan noise. Yeah, still under 60 degrees, well under 60 degrees. It only looks like a one degree difference running this overclock. Now remember, even when I say stock on the left-hand side here, the stock settings are actually overclocked, because it is a small factory overclock compared to if you bought like a you know reference model on your 3060. We can definitely tell we're drawing more power, so that is one, you know, one downside to the overclock. Um, besides, if you have temperature issues, it's just it does draw a bit more power, but this doesn't seem like that much more. 
I don't have any any super huge concerns over the power draw difference. And can I also just say, I'm glad that this benchmark run is staying sort of side by side. Right here we can start to get a bit of the differences, but one frustrating thing with the Red Dead Redemption 2 benchmark when I do side by side videos is it likes to get out of sync because each benchmark run can have some small differences um, <laughs> between runs and then they can get out of sync from each other here. But overall, man, other than that initial little snow scene, we haven't seen any other case where it seems to be performing worse on the overclock. Temperatures seem good. Power draws slightly higher, but you know, I, I think this performance gain is absolutely worth it. Let's take a look at the final numbers here. But yeah, it looks like we're jumping up pretty significantly. I'm very happy. Well, I still think that cooler is stupid on the 3060 if you have to pay a lot more for it. But it was cool to see that we got, that was about eight and a half to nine percent more performance, uh, depending on which benchmark we count. Now, obviously this would be better if I could have ran a bunch of more benchmarks and all of that. But seeing that kind of performance gain as just, you know, you download MSI Afterburner, you click a few buttons, that's really cool. It was still running in the mid 50 degree range. That's insane. Uh, now, if I really wanted to, uh, it'd be interesting if we pushed the voltage higher using the voltage curve and stuff like that, and just see if we could have kept stable by feeding it more voltage. It certainly had the, you know, thermal room uh, to go farther, but this is about as far as I've got the time to mess with it uh, in, in this video. But overall, when it comes to my thoughts on paying for a ridiculous cooler on a GPU, my thoughts are always, if paying for the ridiculous cooler brings you close to the price range of the next step up in graphics card, you'd be better off just buying the next step up in graphics card. I would rather have a terrible cooler on a 3060 Ti than a Strix cooler on my 3060 if the cost was about the same. So that's the biggest mistake I people uh, see people do on this, at least in my opinion, is just, you know, at least if, if what you're going for here is mostly performance. I mean, I get that there's other things about this cooler. It has really good RGB. You want it to look pretty, all of that. Anyway, uh, so that's the main thing I want, want to make sure people kind of avoid though, is I worry sometimes people do this in, in their PC builds just in general, all, all over the place, is you know, uh, you want to get a huge beefy cooler on your CPU and overclock it and all of that, and then you know, you want a really good cooler on your GPU and all of that, but could you have just bought a better CPU and a better GPU without buying all the crazy coolers to overclock them and just ended up with better performance at the same price anyway? In my opinion, it's really at the high end where everything's diminishing returns anyway, and there really isn't a significantly better GPU unless you're paying like, you know, the difference between a 3080 and a 3090, where yeah, you could probably pay for a better cooler model and still be hundreds less than the 3090, you know, that kind of thing. Anyway, that's my overall thoughts on the topic, but either way, uh, you know, overclocking can be a fun way to get a little more performance out of your GPU. And it's nice to have a nice cooler when you're doing that. I got other things to do guys, so I'm gonna let you guys go. I hope you all have an excellent day.